Hello everybody and welcome back to Valda's Story. As always, I'm DW. Last time we went through the Engineer's Palace and we got our Lightning Magic and our Divine Dust for our Divine Key. This time around we're going to go through the uh, cr Mana Crystal Mines. But before we do that, we're going to go up and visit Starry to buy some Anti-Venom uh, Elixir. This is not uh, necessary really, but there's some poison in the mines, and, well, it's nice not to be poisoned. Now, we could have accessed the mines as soon as we completed the uh, fire area, but it's nice to do it after you have the lightning magic, for a reason that might be apparent by the end of the video. One hopes. So, the main gimmick of the mines are these breakaway blocks, these really just, I'll say cleverly placed archer. Um, yeah. And these poison water, which won't affect us now, but can be very annoying if you do not have uh, an anti-venom elixir. Now these Demon sorceresses. These upgraded demon sorceresses. Oh man. They are just a real pain, especially when backed up by an archer here. Fortunately, uh, there's not too many of them in this uh, area, and they are fairly easily avoided outside of this one, and god damn, that archer AI just, is, just knows when to throw that mine. In terms of the uh, area itself, it's fairly linear. Um, there's, it's also very short, as you can probably tell by the length of the video. There's not a lot in the way of like unique or interesting treasure, except for a couple of um, relatively bizarre crew members. Now, we can't get Ben over there just yet, because we don't have the demon key, but we'll get the demon key soon enough. Through this hidden little door, we find Sir Pancakes, who is some sort of Magic time corgi who can float but couldn't float before uh, coming down to this city? Uh, I don't know, but recruiting Sir Pancakes will give you access to a focus finisher that is uh, basically a slot machine that I believe scales with luck. It's pretty good if you're looking to grind out certain items, but we probably won't be seeing it. We'll come back to this room later. There's nothing in here that uh, we can really use right now. Now if we came out this this current room from the bottom, there would be a save point. If we came out this current room from the bottom, well, we'd have a not so nice time. But more on that later. Right now, we already have a boss to fight. We might recognize this guy. He looks very familiar. This is, of course, Gilda's brother, who I misgendered when we first encountered him, but whatever. So we have Azador here. After a uh, bit of back and forth between these two, somebody else seems to jump in. <gasps> it's Dristin! So if you don't choose to uh, take Dristin's life, you'll have to fight him and Azador at the same time. And this is a three-way battle, so... Their attacks will damage each other's, and they will also be summoning in enemies who will also damage each other. As far as I'm aware, it's the only place in the game where angels and demons are actually fighting each other. So it's a fairly interesting and unique fight that way. Now, uh, the best thing to do in this fight is to choose a guy and then focus him down. Personally, I find Azador is a bit easier to track since he doesn't, you know, turn invisible or uh, sort of teleport. But, you know, it, it's kind of up to you. Depending on who you beat first will change the second phase of the fight, so do be aware of that. Fortunately, they share the same health bar. Now, you might notice how awesome the sort of lightning chain is. I it's really great for extending combos. Um, I don't do so great in uh, this fight, but just keep an eye out, because we'll keep using it. So once you defeat one of them, something happens. 
their soul, the soul from the defeated one enters the body of the not defeated one, and you get basically a powered up version of that uh, other fight. And it will like you know change depending on who you de defeat first, as far as I'm aware. Also has a pretty good boss. Thing. Now, unfortunately, in all my uh, sort of test playthroughs, I kind of always killed Dristin, so uh, when I was recording this, I was coming to this fight blind. Um, so I didn't do so great, because I really was not uh, sure what I was uh, going to uh, fight, because I haven't really done this fight too often. Now, there's a third phase. This is the Abomination. The Abomination is... For one, it, a fairly unique and interesting uh, fight just in itself. Uh, but it's also maybe not super difficult. They do have uh, some unique abilities. Um, they're kind of like, you know, variants on the um, both of Azador's and Dristin's fight. Um, I also want to comment on something earlier. Um, apparently when you're silenced, you can't use your focus finisher. This was something that I actually did not know. So, there you have it. The Abomination will generally just stay in the center of the room. I don't remember if they move at all. It certainly doesn't seem that way. And there we have it. For defeating the Abomination, we get a very special soul, one that we could not attain any other way. And that is the Twisted Soul. The Twisted Spirit, I'm sorry. Now before we uh, collect our reward, I do want to explore this um, sort of area a bit, because it is a, probably the most unique boss arena in the entire game. There is this big gaping hole here that you can get to and jump up there and then get off screen and there's absolutely nothing up there. There's no secrets, which is a bit disappointing. But anyway, let's collect our reward. So now we have the demon key. Hey, now we can open so many doors, but oh, what's this? Yes, we have an escape sequence. Fortunately, there is plenty of time, but you do want to try to get through areas as quickly as possible, but... You should be okay. Now, there's something that we can get in this room now that we have the demon key. Of course, we have to dodge a lot of enemy attacks. We can get the Dreadnought Armor. We'll check out the Dreadnought Armor eventually, but I don't think it's something that we'll switch to. This room is usually uh, very difficult, but uh, I just, I don't know. Got some good RNG. And of course, we have to remember to recruit Ben McSteely. Because this is the only time that you can uh, recruit him, as far as I'm aware. You can actually come back to this area after the whole escape sequence. But um, I, I don't know if he will still be there or if he will die or something if you don't recruit him now. There's really no point in like battling guys at this what while you're escaping, it'll just waste time, so you do want to try to dodge and avoid enemies the best you can. This room usually gives you a lot of trouble by having to get through it. Pretty much unscathed. And there we have it. We are now out of the mines and we can't enter them from this area. But later on. Isk is looking a bit worse for wear, however. Alex here will tell us that apparently the mana heater is broken. So why don't we go around and chat to people to see just what has happened. I don't think uh, Micah or Misha or however her name is pronounced will say anything. Tramguard, which is a very uh, nominative deterministic name. <laughs> will say stuff, and of course, Gon Gon will be like, oh no, we have to move. Little Tanny is cold. 
These two people here will say nothing different, which is a bit unfortunate. Oh, so it looks like they're... They don't really want to go to other towns because they don't want to be... They don't want to, you know, suffer other people's resources. But, ugh. Why don't we talk to it, uh, good old... Whoever this guy's name, I didn't see his name quick enough. But yeah, so... If we could find a new thing to replace the mana heater, if only we knew a top-notch engineer. Hmm. Good thing we happen to know a top-notch engineer in form of Claudia. And it's also a good thing that she likes to hang out at the tram stop. And guess where the Isk tram goes to? It goes right to Herc. She does have a dead mana heater core. Hmm. Now if only we had some sort of, like, electricity ability that we could charge it with. Eh, it turns out that we all happen to have one. So there you go. That's how you complete this little side quest. And uh, if you don't do this, by the time you do the next dungeon, uh, Isk will basically die and there won't be anybody there. So, going back to whatever this guy's name is, give him the core, and he'll repair it. It won't be instant, but it will. Next time we visit Isk, it should be fine. So that's it for now, but why don't we see what, what that fight is like if we do kill Dristan. This is coming at this room from the bottom, and you can see... This room is pretty rough. Just with the placement of the archer and the fallaway blocks, these two goliaths. It's best just to run. Get... <laughs> so now, this fight with just Azador is pretty much the exact same thing as the first time you fought him, except now we he will have upgraded demon enemies. That's pretty much it. As far as I can tell, the dialogue isn't all that different. Except Dristan doesn't, you know, jump into you. Now, there are reasons for why you would want to kill Dristan and fight Azador by himself. Mainly because of the reward. Uh, for beating Azador, you get a, like, greater, or like, the, the superior soul or whatever. And um, you don't get very many demon ones of those. You only get two others. Whereas with angels, you get about, I think, like five or six. I also do much better in this fight, though I'm still missing a lot with my lightning chains. The build on this character, as opposed to the main save, is more focused on um, dealing light magic. So you can see I'm wearing the paladin armor. Um, that will cause, um, sometimes I will inflict silence on this guy, which is fairly helpful, because he'll just sort of stand there, not doing anything. And if I just countered there, I probably would have gotten the s rank time. Oh uh, well. Fortunately, we beat him using bleed. So you don't get much difference for an S rank, just, you know, four more HP, but we do get the Archdemon Spirit, which you might want. So anyway, I've been DW, thank you for watching.